Today we're going to look at several patterns you can use with Next.js server actions and toast notifications. Let's get right to it. Last week, I covered the Next Safe Action library and said I was going to refactor most of my server actions to use the library. And I'll put a link to that video in the description. So I was refactoring my server actions this week and I realized I almost always use a Shad CNUI toast notification with server actions. You can do this in a few different patterns. So today I wanna to look at the possibilities and show you the pattern that I decided to go with. Now, before we do, I wanna quickly address a question that came up a couple of times in the comments after last week's video. I was asked more than once if next safe action is the same thing as the new React use action state hook. And no, it's not. Use action state is a new React hook that works with server actions, but it doesn't have the full features of next safe action. And that's why I've chosen it. As my video's thumbnail emphasized last week, next safe action has type safety built in because it's designed to be used with Zod or other validation libraries like Valibot. Next safe action also abstracts away a lot of boilerplate. There's no try catch needed in your server actions. Next safe action auto magically catches all the errors and delivers them in a predictable structure. You'll see a few more benefits using next safe action as we work with it to provide toast messages today. I'm providing a link to today's code repository in the video description, and I've already added Shad CNUI to the project because we're going to use the toast component from that library. But if you haven't used the Shad CNUI library before, I've got a very short video on getting started with it that I'll link to in the video description that will help you get started if you want to learn more about it. Now there are a couple of things you need to do to add a toast component from Shad CNUI to your project. So one of those things is to run the following command. Now this is after you've already added the Shad CN library to your project, and you can learn how to do that in my other video if you haven't. Now you run this command to add the toast component, but then you also need to add the toaster component, and it will be added with this into your project, but you actually need to add this into your layout, and I'll show you mine. So you can see here that I have imported toaster, and then after you do that, you need to go ahead and just put it underneath the children in your root layout, and then it will apply to the rest of your application. Okay, now in my starter repository, I'm going to open up the file tree and just emphasize here that I do have a data directory with users.json. I'm going to run a mock server using JSON server today. And I did that in last week's video as well. So I'll hide that file tree again, open a terminal window. And if you haven't used JSON server before, just type npx json server couple of things we want to do here. One is the watch flag. So I'll watch the data directory, look for users.json, that's my file. And then I'll choose a port because we need to move the default port or it would want to run on 3000, just like our dev development project here in Next.js. So I'm going to put it on 3500, start that up and it should find that users JSON. Now we've got the resource available here. After that, you'd want another terminal window to go ahead and run your project with npm run dev. We'll get that running on port 3000. Okay, pattern number one is the waterfall. I think that's the way we all think at first, just synchronous, do one thing, then do the next. Now, before I get into that here in the user form that we import, I wanna show here that I'm using a modal in this demo project, so I'm intercepting a route. I've got a parallel route up here with modal, it intercepts that, and so essentially when I make a change to the user form, I need to import it in two different pages. One is the modal, one is the fallback. And I've got videos on that if you're not familiar with that. But now let's go ahead and look at what changes here. So we're not going to look at the page so much, even though that's where I need to import it. We need to look at the user form itself. So here's what we're starting out with. I'll hide the file tree, scroll down here, and you can see that I am importing this save user action and I'm putting it in the use action hook from next safe action. This was covered in last week's video. It brings in an execute function where we can execute the action later in our code. We get the result and we get is executing, which is a Boolean. So let's move down and just look at how I left the function, the on submit function from last week. Now I've got a comment here about testing validation errors if we want to purposefully submit some incorrect or invalid data. Now, 
we can't do that in the form because we're using React hook form and it validates it with Zod on Blur. As I note here, there's no need for further client side validation in the submit function because of how React hook form works with Zod. But here we execute and we pass in the form values. So this calls the server action. Now after that, we're refreshing and of course that's to get any new data, maybe a new timestamp. And then we're resetting the form for React hook form that resets dirty fields. Now this doesn't have a toast. This is just where we left it last week. So let's see how we would apply a toast to this with that waterfall behavior. So to do that, I've created another user form component, user form one, as we look at this example. I'll hide the file tree once again. Let's look at what changes. So what we need to do up here is bring in the use toast hook from our components that we got from Shad CN. And once we have that use toast hook, we can define toast right here as we start our functional component. After that, I wanna point something else out here. Instead of just an execute function, now we're bringing in execute async from our use action hook that next safe action provides. That's because we're going to wait for a reply from our server action and then do something else. So we want to be able to await when we call execute async. So let's go down into the on submit. You can see it starts out the same and now I'm getting a result as I await the result from execute async when we call our server action. Now I have to check that result and there's several possibilities and we went over some of those in the previous tutorial as well, but I'll go over those again. Let's look at the display server action uh, component that I have down here and I'll hide this once again. So I'm using this to display the results at the top of the form when they're not valid or even when it's successful. So we have possibly data, it could be undefined, but so it's optional. Same with server errors, fetch errors, and validation errors. So several different types of errors we could receive, or we could receive a message in the data object that says it was successful. So we have to handle each of those. And that's what I display here as I just abstracted this component. And now I of course, share it at the top of the form and it gives those results, but that's not a toast. We also want a toast to show up. So to do that, we have to look back here and this is the original user form again. I need to go back to the new one. There we go. And now we look at this. So we have to look for all of these results with our toast. And this is the one thing I don't like about this waterfall approach. We're awaiting a result. Once we get that, it kind of clutters up our function because now we're saying, okay, if we have a message from result.data.message, then show this successful toast. And then we say, if we have an error, and I'm checking the server error and validation errors here, we can see what else is available. I don't believe the fetch error was available here as a result from this, but the fetch error could happen and we could get that in that other component still in some instances. So that's why I have it in that component. But here is possible failure and we're checking a server error and possible validation errors. And if we get those, I'm not displaying the actual errors here because we display those at the top of the form. This is just a small little toast. So we're saying user did not update. So we're not really awaiting that result, but we were up here for the successful message. You could use the error messages here if you want to, but that's a lot to fit into a toast possibly. And then of course, we still have the router refresh and form reset. So this pattern is kind of the most basic one you would think of. This is how most people think at first. We're going to do one thing, wait for that, then check, possibly do the next, possibly do the next. It kind of litters your function a little bit with all of the possibilities for toast that you might need to account for though. Let's make the tutorial official and roll that footage. And now we're ready for pattern number two, use the server response component. So let's go ahead and look at that server response component once again, I'll scroll down here. Now it receives the result already. So this is one pattern that I don't recommend, but I wanna talk it through because honestly, I didn't wanna write out the code. I feel like it's a pattern you shouldn't follow, but I think it's important to discuss because if I don't, someone else will probably comment, hey, what if I did this? So let me show you what I think about it at least. We're getting that result from the hook 
So we don't need to have all of those toast messages in the function, and that's one thing I wanted to get away from. But now inside of this component, if we're abstracting that, what we would have to do here, you couldn't just call a toast right away because then it would pop up a toast all the time, anytime anything re-rendered. So you would have to use a use effect hook. Now that's one thing I think most of us try to avoid unless we absolutely need to. But then you would be checking all of the different possibilities that you are down here as well to show those form errors at the top. You would be checking those inside the use effect and those would be dependencies and it could kind of become a mess. So I didn't want to code it out. I did want to talk about it. Somebody might say, hey, maybe I could do this. Yeah, but there's a better solution. So let's move on to pattern number three, hook callbacks. Okay, we're in the next safe action docs right here. And this is all about the hook callbacks and you can see how they work. So we pass in the server action here. They have test action. After that, there is a config object here and we set what we want to call for these different possibilities. I've been using on success and on error for the most part. And they of course allow that data to come back. Also the input if we wanted. So that's like state where you could compare, but we also get whatever data might be sent back like a message. We also don't have to check all those individual errors right away. We can just go right here and say, hey, we have an error. Now we can pull out those individual errors if we want to. But let me show you how I applied this with toasts in my application. Okay, we're back in VS Code and I've got another version of the user form component open. And this one, I've brought the toast in once again. And then at the top, of course, I've defined toast. But then right here where we have the use action hook from next safe action, I am also passing in that object here. So for on success, I'm receiving the data as a param and then I can call my toast right here. So you doing that, I can use that message from the data in the description. Likewise, I have the on error callback and here I could use the error if I want to. But once again, I'm not because I'm already providing that information at the top of the form component if there's an error. So all I really need the toast to do is say user did not update but it is available to you if you wanted to use the error. And as I mentioned, all the different types of the errors are available. So I'm going to change this just to show you, but you could put in error and then you start with your dot and you've got all the different error types here. So just wanted you to know all of that is available inside of the on error callback. Now there's several benefits to using these callbacks with the hook and let's talk about them. So the first one is it lets me keep all the toast right here at the top. They're not cluttering up my functions. And if you remember in this other example here, I also had to use a conditional. So if I had a message here, I don't have to do that. It's just on success. I expect to have data if I'm successful. And of course we can use optional chaining here as well. And as I mentioned in the other patterns, I would have to check each error type and you don't have to do that here. You just have the on error callback and then we can use the error if we want to. So let's quickly look at my on submit function and you can see it's once again very simple, although I've got these extra comments in here. One thing I did though was leave in the execute async and I'm awaiting that because I thought about this. Now in your local dev environment, it's going to happen really fast. You're going to get a very fast reply from your server action here. It's all on the same computer, but when you deploy, that may not be quite as fast depending how far you are from the server and then calling router refresh immediately. Well, that could go wrong. You want to probably wait till you confirm that that server action has completed. So I went ahead and put the await execute async here from next safe action and then it will wait until that has completed and then you can call router refresh and be confident that you could be getting a new timestamp, new data from the server. Now, one final thing that may come up just with next safe action in general, and of course it could with this type of pattern, is what if you need to use more than one server action on the page? Maybe you have a save button and a delete button. Well, you would want to use a second use action hook and you would be passing in whatever the other action was to the second hook. But at that point, you need to start using aliases here. So we could alias each one of these if we wanted to. Instead of just execute async, we could have this be like uh, execute async 
save because this is our save action. So then you would use this in your code because you're creating an alias. And here you could have an alias for the result because you would probably have two of those display components depending on which action was called. So now you would have possibly save result. And then instead of is executing, you might have is saving. And then you could use those throughout the code. And that way, if you needed to use another hook, of course, you would change save to delete. And you would have these identified individually, of course, throughout your code. So just alias these if you need to. I thought I'd better bring that up because somebody may not have thought about how to use two of these in the same component, or you could even use more. But the nice thing, once again, is say you put that hook underneath, all of your toast logic and everything is going to be right in the same place in your code, not littered throughout functions, not off in some other abstract component. It's all right here. So this is the way I've decided to use server actions with toast notifications as I refactor the previous server actions that I had in my projects. Hey guys, I wrote a blog post about last week's video and I plan to write a follow-up including the information from this week's video. And as soon as I publish all of that, you'll be able to find it at davegray.codes. And this topic, like many of the topics I cover, was based on viewer requests and questions. So be sure to leave your comments, questions, and requests in the comments on this video. It helps me out. That way I know what you want to see in the future and I can start working on those projects in advance. A quick thank you to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider. Dad is a senior. And my junior patrons. Programming Polyglot, Tim, Philippe, Morgan, Isaac, Will, Ernie, Scott, Stacy, Philip, Abe, Javier, Michael, Alexi. You're helping me reach my goals. Thank you. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it has exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week. I'll put a link to it in the video description, so please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day. Let's write more code together very soon.